Women in Art Edmonia Lewis During the 19th century, the neoclassical style, which sought a revival of the ideals and forms of ancient Greece and Rome, was extremely prominent. This style came to be expressed in new and innovative ways by the sculptor Edmonia Lewis. Some details surrounding Lewis's childhood are unclear, but it is believed that she was born in the 1840s. Funded by her half-brother, who was financially well-off, she would eventually study at Oberlin College. Tragically, she would suffer a great deal of racial discrimination there because of her African ancestry, even being beaten by a violent gang who accused her of poisoning her roommates. She found support within the abolitionist community, however, and worked in Boston for a time. She eventually settled in Rome as a sculptor, feeling that working there would free her from the constant racial scrutiny she experienced in the United States. Both in Rome and in the United States, she would create a variety of works that were both impressive on an artistic level and deeply personal. One of Lewis's most famous works of art is her sculpture Forever Free, which she completed in 1867. This sculpture was meant to celebrate the Emancipation Proclamation and even takes its title from the words of the document. This work of art is rife with deeper meaning. While the man featured raises his hand in victory and in freedom, the broken shackle on his wrist indicates that there are still trials to come for the black community in the United States. The broken shackle underneath his foot further communicates this idea. The woman kneeling beside him clasps her hands in hope and is dressed in a neoclassical garment, giving the sculpture the same epic quality of prior neoclassical works. Furthermore, the fact that the woman is fully dressed is meant to give her a sense of dignity that many depictions of women, particularly African women, lacked at the time. Some scholars believe that the woman's kneeling position and clasped hands are meant to allude to the hopes of Lewis and many other African-American women at the time that they would be given full voting rights as well as being freed from slavery. Regardless of whether this was Lewis's intention or not, it is clear from the woman's expression that she is meant to convey a sense of hope for the future. You can see this work of art at the Howard University Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Another stunning sculpture created by Edmonia Lewis was her 1868 sculpture Hiawatha. Lewis was an admirer of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, himself a prominent abolitionist. She would continually return to depicting scenes and characters from his epic poem, The Song of Hiawatha, throughout her career. Her admiration for the poem possibly could have stemmed from the fact that in the poem, Hiawatha is described as originating with the Ojibwe, from whom Lewis also claimed partial heritage. Although over the years the poem has been criticized for its overly romantic depictions of Native American culture, this sculpture can leave us in no doubt that Lewis perceived the character of Hiawatha in an extremely sympathetic light. Here, Hiawatha gazes slightly to the side, his eyes wise and knowing. By sculpting Hiawatha's head and shoulders alone, evoking Roman busts of old, the sculpture draws attention to his introspective personality. Lewis also renders details such as hair and clothing with extreme delicacy and softness. These clothes further expand upon Hiawatha's characterization, making him feel like a real person and not solely a romanticized hero. This work of art can be found at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. A later work by Edmonia Lewis was her sculpture of the biblical figure Hagar, which she created in 1875. In the Old Testament of the Bible, it is written that Hagar was a servant cast out by the patriarch Abraham and his jealous wife Sarah. Once more, Lewis's application of neoclassical elements such as Hagar's contrapposto pose, with her weight focused on one leg, and flowing, Greek-style garments add beauty and balance to the composition. The most effective element of the sculpture, however, is Hagar's expression. In her depiction of Hagar's story, Lewis illustrates the young woman as frightened and alone, but yet looking forward with resolve and courage. 
She clasps her hands with both anxiety and with hope and turns her face forward, refusing to relent in spite of her difficult circumstances. In this way, Hagar becomes a symbol of strength and courage in the face of adversity, themes Lewis's biography indicate she would have understood well. This work of art is currently at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. The sculptures of Edmonia Lewis bear universal themes that were relevant in the 19th century and are still relevant today. Her sculptures often speak of individuals who face the future with hope and with wisdom in spite of the difficult circumstances in which they have lived. Through studying her works of art, we as viewers can feel the sculptor's voice speaking directly to us across time, giving us a strong sense of who the woman was and what she believed.